Hello, viewers. My name's Shay. I'm here with the Future Maker Lab at WSU Tech. Today, we're going to learn about how aircraft engines work. So, first, how's, you know, what's the physics of this? How does this actually work? Uh, a normal reciprocating combustion engine has to breathe just like we do. So it has to take in oxygen in order to function. It's basically like a giant vacuum pump. So when you're vacuuming, you're thinking about, oh, okay, that's sucking up crumbs. This is sucking up air. So the first part is this intake, and this is where it breathes in breaths of air, and that gets fed into the engine through these intake valves on one side. And then when it exhausts, because we have to expel carbon dioxide and breathe out, engines have to exhaust and breathe out as well, or stuff would just stall out and stop working. There's an exhaust port right here, and that connects to our exhaust pipe, and that's how it breathes out. The less restricted that is, the more power your engine produces. So let's take a look at the four different cycles that this engine goes through to create power. So you can see here's the piston right here, and we've got our intake valve on the side like here, right here. And then we also have our exhaust valve and there's one of these for each cylinder. This is a six cylinder engine. So we got one, two, three, and then three on the back. So I'm gonna start spinning this and I'll show you how this works. Right now we're at what's called top dead center. And when we start moving the piston down, you're gonna notice the intake valve starts opening and that's because it's sucking in a fresh breath of air. At the very bottom, you're gonna see that intake valve here starts to close and the piston's gonna move back up. And this is called the compression stroke where it squeezes that breath of air into a much, much smaller space. All right, so you can see at this point, it's taken a big volume of air and squished it down to a tiny, tiny space. That's called compression ratio. And it's really important to how much power an engine makes. The higher the compression ratio, the more power you can create. At this point, we would have sprayed fuel in and mixed that fuel in with this air as well. So you've got this completely uh, similar mixture of air and fuel sitting in here in this tiny, tiny space. At this point, we'd fire a spark and set that spark off to create the ignition. Three things you need for ignition are fuel, air, and an ignition source. And at this point, suddenly there's a controlled explosion in a tiny space and it's got nowhere else to go. And so it's gonna shove on that piston and push with incredible force that piston back down again. And this is called the power stroke. And you can hear that click. That was the firing of the uh, spark, creating the ignition source that forces that piston back down. So that piston now created power, while these other ones you could see were doing something else. So there's always an offset. Not all your pistons are creating power at the same time. Usually it's just a couple of them while the others are doing something else to offset. At the bottom, just like when we breathe, we have to expel the exhaust. And so as it gets to the bottom, you're gonna see the exhaust port. This valve starts to open and the piston moves back up which is helped by the power stroke from another cylinder like this one over here. And as it pushes up, it's gonna expel all that exhaust out this port and out the exhaust pipe. And at this point, we've created all four cycles and we're ready to repeat. And as long as the engine's running, it's repeating those cycles hundreds and hundreds of times a second. We have programs, uh, an aviation maintenance technician program. That's somebody that would be taking apart the engine, looking at maintenance, trying to figure out what's wrong, overhauling engines, keeping aircraft maintained. That's a really important job. Um, similarly, there's automotive programs where you would look at reciprocating piston engines and doing overhauls and fixing different systems, um, looking at valve timings, things like that. So if those are jobs that are interesting to you, uh, you could be playing with engines like this yourself. And that's all I've got for you today. 
So this has been Shay signing off from Future Maker Lab. If you're liking our videos, we got more to come. Please subscribe, hit that like button below, and we'll see you next time.